Hello, it is Saturday, July 8th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday puzzle today, which means a themeless crossword, a themeless, potentially difficult crossword. And uh, we'll see how quickly I can solve it. I might have a brief bit of respite here. There was a music festival going on, essentially right outside, that uh, was quite noisy. And then it started to thunderstorm and the music festival stopped. Um, but then the rain stopped as well. And I think according to the weather forecast, I have about a, a 15 minute reprieve from the rain. So there might be, there might be not very much noise at all for at least uh, a, a good chunk of this solve. We'll have to see. In any case, this potentially not particularly noisy edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us night by Noah Bizanson, Madeline Lee, Tom Nemchek, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shulmaster, and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support, their sustaining this channel and keeping this series going. And for that, I am extremely grateful. So thank you to them, and thank you to everybody who's a patron of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. You can find more about that over at patreon.com slash daily solve, or via the link in the description field underneath the video. And there, of course, you can find all of the bonus videos for patrons, such as yesterday's not particularly impressive uh, uh, New York Times mini crossword weekly pseudo speed solve, and um, also the day before the um, monthly bonus puzzle for G uh, July themed after uh, second half of the year day. Anyway, uh, check those things out if you're a patron, and thank you if you are. Uh, and also, please do subscribe to the channel on YouTube if you've not gotten around to that. And finally, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There's a link in the description field to that. Uh, nice, friendly chat community. <clears throat> All right, let's get on to the solve. As I said, this is a Saturday crossword, so it's unthemed. Could well be fairly tricky. It's by Brandon Copy, who's constructed, I think, around a dozen puzzles for the New York Times. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Milk duds. No idea what that. Maybe s spoiled milks or something. Dud duds being a kind of a, a failure or a flop. Link warning. So this is something that has popped up in the New York Times. I would say maybe half a dozen times in the last several months, maybe the last year. NSFW not safe for work. That could be a warning before you click a link to uh, let you know that you shouldn't open this in a work environment. So let's see if that gives me anything. Fictional group led by a dark lord. Could be the Sith from the Star Wars films, maybe. Um, I'll leave that in for now, but what I meant to do is check these crosses. Setting for some high school experimentation, a science lab, I would, I would suspect. There we go. More than a couple. Could be a few. And to feel elation is to... To feel a... St it, starting with the F is really throwing me off because it makes me keep thinking of feel, which is not going to be in the answer. You're not going to repeat a word from the clue in the answer. Alma mater for Jackie Robinson in brief. Did he go to UCLA? I don't know. I mean, that's a big sports school and Jackie Robinson was a baseball player. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try it, but I'm not actually certain. JJ or TJ of the NFL, another sports question. Um, and Blank Games, developer behind League of Legends. That is uh, Riot Games makes the game League of Legends, which I have not played myself, but I'm sort of aware of it. And a rear guard. So a guard for one's rear, maybe? A seat belt? No, it doesn't really make sense. Um, a seat something? Milk duds. Oh. Duds could be clothing. Still don't really know. Nursing something? I, I'm still not really sure what that's asking for. Ding for a QB. A ding, an interception maybe? A ding meaning, uh, you know, a bit of criticism, I guess. Base, in this case, a base figure. Um, it could be a, I mean, it could be a figure on a military base maybe. Holder of very small blueprints. Holder of very small Blueprints. I don't know. Go on and on is to to blab to blather. That could be it. Yeah. If you're going on and on, you're talking at great length. Precipitous uh, question mark. 
So my first thought was sort of steep, but that would be precipitous. With The question mark makes it seem like maybe we're meant to interpret this in a kind of overly literal way, like we it deals with precipitation maybe. I'm not exactly sure what the pun is there yet. Blank Lincoln Harris, early black economist. I wonder if I wonder if I'll know this name when I see it. I don't know off the top of my head. So milk duds. It does look like nursing, doesn't it? Duds. Let's see if these letters work. Holder of very small blueprints. Oh, germ? Small sort of genetic blueprints or something? Oh no, genetic blueprint would be a gene. Right, okay, that makes I talked through my completely incorrect answer and it gave me the correct answer. Base figure. Oh, a non-commissioned officer. So it is, I think it is a figure on a, on a military base. And then rear guard is seat something. It still looks like to me. Ah, if you feel elation, you could float on air. So you're saying, I'm feeling elation. I'm floating on air. I mean, I don't think anyone would say I'm feeling elation, but uh, you see what I mean. All right. Watt, I suppose this is JJ Watt or TJ Watt perhaps. And rear guard is, it is seat something, but I'm still not sure just what. Sign of a big hit. Oh, wow. This is a, this is a, a New York Times crossword classic that I haven't seen much recently. SRO, standing room only, which would be sign of a big hit on, uh, in a theater or something. There might be tickets still being sold, but no seated tickets, just standing room. One taking a load off. Well, load spelled in that way looks like a load in a mine, you know, a load of ore, a seam of ore, something like that. Um, sorry. Uh, but what would that be? A rail car? I don't know. I was thinking maybe, you know, the sort of sort of tram inside of a mine. But I, I'm not sure. Crispy confection. Not Oreos, despite that being arguably the official confection of the New York Times. Uh, crispy confection. Not sure. Rear guard seat. I don't know why I can't see that. It's bizarre, isn't it? Uh, what, have, what have I looked over here? No, I haven't. Mount seen from Reggio Calabria. That would be Mount Etna, certainly. And, oh, precipitous rainy. What it is where I am right now here in London. So, oh, a nursing bra. Okay, so duds. Uh, it, was cl- it was sort of clothing or something you wear. Um, okay, so I was sort of on the right track. I just couldn't couldn't get to the answer. Uh Blank Lincoln Harris earlier. Abram Lincoln Harris, perhaps? Service accessories. Hymnals. In a church service, you could have a hymnal, a sort of accessory, a, a, you know, a bit of accoutrement, a bit of uh, equipment that will help you in, in the service. Equipment is, is a funny way to think about it, but anyway. Italian football coach, Blank Pioli. And that's beside the point. If... I can't tell if this is I something or if something. One going out on a limb, question mark. Going out on a limb. And a whole bunch, oh, this is not right. I could, either of these could be wrong. Well, more than a couple, literally, if if you have a single and a couple and a, a trio, you know, you could have a triad or a trio or something like that. So a whole bunch could be cis that's wrong. I mean, I would be, wouldn't be surprised if there were, there are probably any number of sort of dark Lord characters in various pieces of fiction. A whole bunch, I'm not sure. Italian football coach, yeah, no clue about that. That's beside the point. I, I really... I don't know. One going out on a limb, who blank and mends to God himself commends. Who sins and mends, maybe, to God himself commends, Cervantes. Uh, Let's try it. Oh, a whole bunch is a host. That is exactly right. Okay. A large number, a host. Uh, I keep looking at this Italian coach as though I'm going to know who it is suddenly. That's beside the point. This is looking less useful the more I fill out. One going out on a limb. Tiny? I don't know why that would be the case. Targets of reflexology. Uh, oh. Targets. Maybe this isn't host. I mean, that looks like it should be plural. 
whole bunch. Is that really not host? I guess this, this may not be sins. Errors? I don't know. That's beside the point. Oh, maybe it is errors. Irrelevant. Who errs and mends to God himself commends. Whole bunch. Okay, that still could be host. Really looks like it, doesn't it? One going on on a limb. Tire? I don't, oh boy, I'm not, I, I'm stuck in that area, aren't I? Escape room, question mark. So it's some sort of pun. Rear guard, one taking a load off. Crispy confection. Longtime celebrity gossip show. Not the right person to ask about that. Film ineligible to get an Oscar. Interesting. What would make a film ineligible to get an Oscar? I don't know. Band whose debut album, Murmur, was Rolling Stone's 1983 album of the year. I don't actually know, but I'm just purely based on the year and it being three letters. I'm wondering, is there any way it's REM, maybe? Um, I never particularly got know, knew that band very deeply. I just heard the ones that were on the radio, basically. Company acquired by GE in 1986. Um, REO? Oh, G yeah, G. Well, no, never mind. I was thinking of GM. REO was the, the auto manufacturer, and then I was thinking maybe they were acquired by General Motors. But uh, that's a different thing. I still think this might be REM. Ranch alternative. So it could be a ranch as in a property, the, the, that sort of thing, a ranch where you... You know, you have a cattle ranch or a dairy ranch or something, but it could also be ranches in the salad dressing flavor. Uh, yeah, it could be like Italian dressing or, so, or French dressing, maybe. Oh, that does actually fit. Wow. Do I think that's likely? What is this? Company acquired by GE. I just have no idea about that one. Independent in Congress beginning in 1991. Hmm. 1991. I mean, who were some independents who would have been around at that time? Ross Perot, Ralph Nader, maybe? I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. It's before I would have been aware of what was happening politically. One taking a load off, crispy confection, arch enemy. Boy, the, that upper left section went pretty well, and now I'm I'm not doing, I'm not making much pay, progress. Am I? Hunter gatherer, so a gatherer of hunters. It looks like, with that with that question mark um, pun in, pun indicator, be worthy. Be worthy. So if something is worthy of a B. Presumably that means it's good, but not amazing. Escape room. Top spot in brief. Crispy confection. What is this one? I hope ranch dressing is right. It seems like it, it might be. Nomads. Roamers. People who roam. Sort of an awkward word, but it, it's grammatical. Betting emotionally in poker slang. Oh, interesting. Uh, that's a good concept to have a phrase for, but I don't know it. Consequently, then, consequently this happened, then this happened, maybe. Consequently, I think of having slightly more of a causal implication than then does, but but maybe. Move quickly, high in a poetic sense, high and away, move quickly. Grand outlook, yeah, maybe this is right. Grand outlook could be a vista if, you're, if you have a grand view of vista. Uh, betting emotionally in poker slang, on, on the T, completely guessing here based on the fill. Okay, try me. Uh, that doesn't look very good. Yeah, maybe it's not that. Arch enemy. Your nemesis, right, of course. Why didn't I get that immediately? On tilt, right. Okay. I think I maybe have heard this before. Maybe not specifically in the context of poker slang, but maybe I've heard it kind of heard it used in broader contexts that were inspired by the poker context. So what is this? This looks like TV movie? Oh, film ineligible to get an Oscar. A made-for-TV movie. Right. Okay, there we go. Because I think in order 
to receive an Oscar, a film needs to have been actually screened in cinemas. I don't think, I think if it was made for TV and then not screened, and we don't really even use this phrase anymore because now so much of film and television production has moved outside of kind of Hollywood studios into other sort of, you know, streaming oriented context that it's not even clear, you know, how you did, how you distinguish between them. So I don't think we, this phrase is even used anymore, but it, it, it totally makes sense. And I'm sure it still is used. There probably still are made for TV movies in that sense. And they're not eligible for Oscars. Clever clue. One going out on a limb. Uh, tires, tire swing. There we go. A tire swing could be hung on the limb of a tree. Very clever. Targets of reflexology. I mean, everything here looks correct to me, except that I just don't understand what on earth this is meant to be. Targets of reflexology. Meat? I mean, there aren't very many words that fit here at all, let alone ones that feel correct. Maybe I do have something wrong somewhere else. Tire swing? Irrelevant. That seems correct. Is it host? Whole bunch. It feels like it must be right, but I'm going to leave it out because it just reminds me that this area needs some attention. Oh, St Stefano, probably. Oh, feet. Oh, that is plural. Ah, I'm an idiot. Sorry. I, I apologize. I'm sure many of you are e-yelling at me through the screen there. All right. Longtime celebrity gossip show. Oh, e-news, I guess. Would have needed the crosses for that one. Uh, T-H-I-S in mathematics. That would be a set of, in this case, letters, but a, 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 in mathematics, often you have a set of numbers. Snack for a pangolin. I guess pangolins eat ants. I didn't know that, but it seems perfectly plausible. Top spot in brief, right? Feuding big time. You're at war? I don't know. RFA. I'm not sure what that is. I wonder if there's another sort of Caesar dressing, maybe? Just trying to think. Oh, actually, you know what? That's better because I bet GE acquired RCA, the electronics manufacturer. That makes sense. And then feuding big time could be at war. Uh, ragu EG is a meat sauce. Um, Hunter gatherer is a, oh, a game warden, right? Someone responsible for sort of gathering or corralling or overseeing hunters. That's a very clever clue as well. Escape room. Oh, garage. Oh, escape. Is there a, I bet there must be a, ca a car model called an escape. And so it's, a, this is a room in which you would store an escape. I think that must be what that means. One taking a, oh, maybe not. One taking a load off. Oh, something's wrong. Crispy confection. Hmm. Taking a load off. Or cart. Right, so I was on the right track with that. Uh, sold out something? Surprised that wasn't SRO. That's so ordinarily what that is. Crispy Confection, top spot in brief. Oh, CEO, the top spot in a company, a firm. So Crispy Confection, oh, a wafer. Sow or so, sign of a big hit. Sold out. I don't know what that is. I mean, is that? Oh, no, 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 this is completely wrong. I never even looked at this again. Rear guard seat sad. No, I just put in SRO and didn't ever look back at this. That was terrible. So seat pad. It is a guard for your rear. It's a rear. It's a seat pad and sign of a big hit. Pow. So in a comic book or something, the sign. Pow. Sorry for the, my repeated ridiculous oversights in this puzzle so far. It's guitarist Carlos Santana of the band bearing his name. A system in which making an L with the thumb and index finger and raising the pinky means I love you. It must be American sign language. So making an L with the thumb and index finger and raising the pinky, I guess like this. All right, that's interesting knowledge. Okay, try me. I'll bite, you could say. Video game hurdle, a boss, I suppose? And man's name that becomes a popular toy brand if you move the first letter to the end. Oleg, Lego, very good. I've never seen this one before. Um, you get a lot of man's name, Otto and Stu and things like that because they sound like English language words, but I've not seen the Lego to Oleg. 
Um, smeltery waste. Oh, this is definitely a slag. There we go. This is that was one of those things. It was on the tip of my tongue, and I just had to, I guess, wait for it to to finally emerge. Jazz singer Sylvia. I'm sure I know the name, but I can't not well enough to immediately jump to it. Unfortunately, this outfit looks ridiculous. I feel silly. It fits. Apt laptop choice for a tennis pro, Acer. It's <laughs> a new one as well. For me, anyway. Uh, grassroots marketing group. A something team. And, oh, S Sylvia. Yeah, okay. I do recognize this, but I can't remember if it's Sylvia Syme or Sylvia Sims. I think Sims. Let's see. Little surprises in computer games. EG, yes. Easter. Easter eggs. Orchestra section. String section, I suppose. Is there anything else that would fit there? I don't think so. Wrangler competitor. So this is referring to uh, jeans, denim, you know, denim trousers. So uh, Lee is a, a competitor to Wrangler jeans. Actress Amanda. Amanda Pete is an actress. There we go. Grass. Oh, street team. Grassroots marketing group. That was a phrase I remember being used all the time in the sort of early 2000s. Street team. I think it, maybe in the early internet days, there were street, I think even before the internet days, but it continued into the early internet. And then I haven't seen that phrase used in kind of a grassroots marketing concept uh, context in quite a long time. Anyway, also, can you really call it grassroots if it's ultimately being a kind of organized top down, which I think they usually were. Pact replaced by the USMCA in 2020. So it's NAFTA, the North, North American Free Trade Agreement, which was replaced by the essentially identical um, U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, I think, in 2020. If something becomes apparent, it will arise. And then Daredevil's equipment could be a ramp. It could jump a, a motorcycle over buses or something, I guess. Uh, musical figure in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, a bard could be a, a musical figure in a kind of uh, mythical or fantasy setting. Or historic as well, obviously. <laughs> Independent in... Uh, in Congress, right? Oh, right. Who was the? Oh, Bernie Sanders, right? Okay. Was I? I would have assumed he was in the like I don't know mid to late eighties, maybe that he started, but no. Okay. I guess because before he was in Congress, he was what the mayor of Burlington, I think maybe. Um, okay, the Big Lebowski protagonist with the the dude, of course, from the Coen Brothers film The Big Lebowski, and party time informally is. One's B day, one's birthday, and hankerings. If you have a hankering for something, you have a yen for it. It's a bit of a desire. So there we go. And that was the Saturday puzzle. A nice, very Saturday. It was a very Saturday puzzle. It was, it was tricky. At least it was for me in in parts. And I guess like, as yesterday, I sort of made it more difficult for myself unnecessarily. But it was also full of clever cluing, uh, ranch alternative. I mean, this isn't misdirection, I suppose. It was just interesting knowledge, film in ineligible to get an Oscar. But there were quite a bit, quite a few bits of misdirection. Escape room. Uh, let's see, what else did we have? There was quite a lot of it, wasn't there, I think. Now I can't find any of it. Oh, rear guard, of course. Uh, base figure. Holder of very small blueprints, maybe. That's more of sort of cryptic. It's not so much expressly misdirecting. It's just kind of an awe. You read it and you think, what on earth does that mean? Uh, oh, precipitous, rainy. There we go. Um, referring to precipitation rather than a kind of precipitous incline. Anyway, uh, just some fun. Oh, milk duds, of course. Um, yeah, just all sorts of... Um, of clever things throughout this puzzle. So well done to Brandon Copy. Enjoyed that one and um, gave me a good a good challenge of parts. And now let's just look at a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. I think maybe there are two. Yes, there are two. So first off, explaining that target. Uh, um, oh, I already forget now. The target arena or something, and it dealt with the um, Minnesota Twins and. Adam Horowitz explains, Target's headquarters is in Minneapolis, hence them buying the naming rights to the stadium where the twins play. So there we have it. That makes sense. And uh, Kimo explains, uh, Eid al-Fitr is more universally known uh, as, the, as the sort of two Eid holidays because it comes after Ramadan, which most people know about. You make a good point in passing that the recent one, Eid al-Adha, is less commonly known 
but in Islam it's often considered as the more important one and is sometimes referred to as the greater Eid. It's also four days long compared to Eid al-Fitr's three days. Um, that is interesting. And I've, I've noticed with actually many religions, I would certainly say this is basically true of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, the sort of most discussed and, and I don't know, socially kind of obvious holidays are typically not the ones that have the highest religious significance. It's interesting how, how common that is. Um, anyway, there we have it. Those are, I think, the only two the only two uh, comments that I saw needed addressing in terms of corrections from yesterday or explanations of that sort. And so that means that draws today's video to a close. Hope you enjoyed it. That was the Saturday puzzle. I did. And I'll be back tomorrow with the Sunday crossword. It will be less challenging than this, most likely, but a longer solve and a much bigger grid. So join me then on that Sunday. And I hope you do. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.